Gotta go, the police are fucking coming. We gotta go, we gotta go. So guys, we're here in the Hong Kong Harbor. It's almost sunset. And the last time I've been here in Hong Kong was over 10 years ago. So when I found out that my cousin was getting married a couple months ago, I knew I had to come back, make a trip and see some family. Also to reminisce my ancestral homeland and to find out more about my father. And to give a little backstory, if it wasn't for my father coming to Hong Kong way back in the late 60s, early 70s, and then eventually immigrating back to America, I would have never existed in the States. I would have been four Lee, mainland Chinese, CCP guy. But I am here today because of my father and the struggles that he's done to leave a communist mainland China during the Cultural Revolution and come over here to America. Now to give a little quick backstory about my father's history, my father was born and raised in Guangzhou, China. He was a very smart and diligent student. You know, he was academically start, smart, he was good looking, he was handsome, he was tall. And I'm not, I promise you, I'm not saying that because it's my father. Uh, this is all heard everything from the relatives from the grapevine. But anyways, he was in high school being a very diligent student when unfortunately Mao Zedong's cultural revolution happened and a lot of the youngsters around my dad's age had to leave school to be forced into the labor camps. So when my fa father found out that he was forced to work in the labor fields uh, doing harsh manual labor, he chose a specific labor camp strategically close to Hong Kong because he knew eventually after maybe two or three years of working out in the fields doing manual labor that him and his buddies we're gonna leave late at night and get out of Dodge. So my father made the daring, the most ballsiest thing with him and his two friends and eventually escaped on foot during the nighttime, slept during the daytime and swam his ballsy ass all the way to Hong Kong, which was then a British colony during around, sometime around the, 19, around the late 60s, early 1970s. So that harbor right behind me my father literally swam from mainland China through that harbor to get to Hong Kong and start his new life here. That harbor, my old man swam in that fucking harbor to leave China. My dad was a really ballsy character. He had massive cojones to leave communist China and come swam his ass all the way to Hong Kong. And not only did he stop there, he was working several, several jobs. He was a true old school hustler. He was working at random restaurants, working as a sous chef. And then on his spare time, he was working as a hawker peddling uh, clothing merchandise. Uh, illegally, in fact. I heard a couple stories from my relatives that when the cops came, he took all his merchandise, all his wares, and got out of Dodge. He had to get the fuck out of there. He had, to, he had to do what he had to do to survive. He was a survivalist. He was a legend in my family because of the risks that my father took. Hong Kong was a safe haven for my father to kind of you know, get his mind right, uh, to help him focus more on his entrepreneurial suits instead of trying to survive and barely having anything to eat like a lot of his friends and colleagues back in mainland China. Being in Hong Kong actually helped him figure out, all right, what's my next step in life? How do I want to build my life? And from then on, he eventually built up his plan and left Hong Kong and immigrated over to the United States. Now, how my dad was able to immigrate over to the United States, well, while he was working in Hong Kong, he asked my cousin, or excuse me, he asked my father's cousin, who I consider my distant aunt. Uh, she was going to university in California and asked her if her boyfriend that she was dating at the time, who was a peach farmer, if he could sponsor him over to America. And he said yes under the condition that he worked at his peach farm in Honolulu for a year. So my dad got his papers and left Hong Kong and worked as a peach farmer in Honolulu as kind of an indentured servant doing manual labor like he did in the past. But you know, this time around, he was grateful. He was in a country filled with land of opportunity for immigrants. Once he fulfilled that obligation, he moved over to California, worked several odd jobs before settling down and working his full-time career at the post office. And somewhere along the lines, my father had been my mother, and she eventually moved from New York and settled with my father in California, and the rest is history. Me and my sister were born, and we lived a wonderful life in California. And the reason why I love Hong Kong so much, three reasons. Number one, the food is amazing. You gotta come out here and you gotta eat. Number two, 
Hong Kong people and Hong Kongers in general are just incredibly kind and very respectful people. They'll give their jacket off their shoulders, make sure you're well taken care of. Great, fantastic people. And the third and most important reason is that if it wasn't for Hong Kong being a safe haven for my dad leaving China and moving and settling in Hong Kong for a little bit before eventually making his final move to America, I would have never existed. Forced in America would have never existed. Seeing what Hong, Kong, what Hong Kongers are going through for the past six months, slowly getting their freedoms and their civil rights slowly eroded away by the pro-Beijing government, and seeing that happen, and I definitely respect Hong Kongers for actually putting up the fight that they are right now for the past six, six months. I definitely feel for them. If my father lived in Hong Kong and settled here, I would be right there in the front lines with all the youngsters. And if my father were still alive and still young, he would be right there, right there protesting against the pro Beijing government. So I definitely, so I 100%. This it means everything for me. This ev means everything for my father. He would definitely, he would still feel for the Hong Kongers if he were still alive. And that's why the whole pro Hong Kong, pro democracy movement, it means fucking means so much for me. Life is still going on, but you can tell that the vibe has completely changed. And it definitely changed, not for the better. Definitely the vibe has completely changed, not for the better, not for the worse, but you know, people are still going out and living their lives even though they're at a dark time right now. It's kind of fucking sucks. There's a protest that happened yesterday night, actually yesterday all day, mostly in the central district where we're at right now. And I hate to say it, it's absolutely fucked. It's pretty bad. But there's a lot of passerbyers, a lot of locals, a lot of press that are around here just taking pictures, analyzing the damage from yesterday's cause. As you can see around me, there's a lot of property damage, mostly around this area, and a lot of the establishments and like areas that are damaged by the protesters are usually pro-CCP organizations, such as the Bank of Communications right in front of me that is, you know, they support the Chinese Communist Party, and that's the reason why a lot of these Hong Kong protesters are destroying all these places. So when me and my uncle are walking down from Victoria Peak, we're actually passing by Hong Kong University. There's a couple of these roadblocks over here, uh, such as this one. Past couple of days, a lot of police have come onto Hong Kong college campuses and have been going against a lot of the protesters. Uh, so, especially here in Hong Kong University, a lot of people are setting up barricades just in case. Setting up barricades just like this one right in front of me, just in case you know police come through and whatnot. Being near the protesters, I was a little uneasy, but you know, they were helping my uncle get through the barricades, telling him to watch out for his head. So they seem like very, very nice people. You think so? <laughs> yeah. Like a, like a protester, all nice people, am I? Yeah. <laughs> I think this might be another roadblock here towards the cafeteria area. A lot of barricades throughout the hallways over here. Just in preparation. Memorial of Tiananmen Square, supposedly donated by an American uh, sculpture, an American artist. I'm gonna do an extra zoom right now. You can see right in front of me there's several roadblocks that are placed towards opposing sides of the roads. Uh, just in preparation, like I said before, of any oncoming police that may have will come to the university campuses that, that have been going on for the past day or two. Smart, tactical. You know, just walking through this Hong Kong University campus, you know, people, a lot of students are you know, preparing for the upcoming police arrival. There's actually memorial, uh, memorial shrines, memorial placements of uh, a lot of the students that have lost their lives, a lot of them that are se severely injured. Uh, but overall, like, the vibe is super nice. Uh, there's actually a lot of adults that are coming in here just telling 
some of the youngsters, the young protesters, hey, you know what, be careful. There's increasingly more police brutality, more police violence. Yeah, uh, other than that, they have a lot of support through the Hong Kong citizens. And I just hope that these young guys are first and foremost safe and hope they achieve their mission and their goals. So my uncle and I have decided to leave the Hong Kong U campuses right now. Uh, there's actually a police van outside about maybe 200 meters from campus. I think things are starting to slowly heat up. So I think it's our time to just skid, skedaddle and get out of here and hope for the best for everybody else. Hi, Al. All I gotta say is that a lot of the protesters, nice people, you know, very well-mannered, very respectful. They're just fighting for their ideas, and I can't hate them, hate on them for that. So right now, just walking around with my uncle and my cousin through the Mongkok district of Hong Kong. That's an area that's heavily affected by a lot of the protests, unfortunately. Um, I want to say it's, it's been happening all over Hong Kong, but a lot of the protests, a lot of the clashes between the police and the protesters have been mostly here in the Mongkok district. Uh, one thing I've noticed is that, as you can see, a lot of like the brick floors that are lay, laid out were actually torn apart, used against the police. A lot of the infrastructure has also been damaged as well, too. A lot of the, if you go through the majority of the corners here in Mongkok, a lot of the traffic lights have actually been burned down or ripped apart or like, destroyed utter pretty much inoperable what else what else a lot of the businesses there's, there's a ton of graffiti a lot of the pro Beijing businesses have been destroyed vandalized mainly for their support of the pro Beijing mainland Chinese government but amidst all the graffiti and tagging and all the destruction that's been happening people are, people are still continuing their lives they're going out and about turn on their day-to-day -day lives, which is a good thing. I think as I come to grow more and more, I realize that whatever kind of bad shit that's going on in the world, people still need to eat, people still need to work and make a living. Life still needs to be continue, continuing. So we're over here in Jim Sajo, and I think some of the student protesters are setting up bamboo blockades through the main roads, obstructing traffic. <laughs> It's pretty crazy how riot police sh showed up two minutes after the protesters were laying down bamboo blocking traffic. Their response time was quick and they definitely do not fuck around. It is getting really fucking serious here in Hong Kong. We ended up taking an MTR station one, no one stop north over in Jordan. We are hoping to find some food, uh, some dim sum, but everything is closed. I think protesters are dispersing. Uh, there's a shit ton of bricks on the road, so I think from the atmosphere, from what everything is going on, I think police are kind of on their way. I think police are on their way over here pretty soon. I mean, it's only a north from that incident just now over in Jim Sajo. Yeah, it's coming pretty soon. There are a lot of bricks here.
Yeah, so we just had breakfast. Uh, we're on the main road over in Jordan, over Nathan Road, right around that area. I'm hearing a lot of random, a lot of random people are just pissed off that, you know, with all the protests, they're not unable to go to work, which is, you know, pretty reasonable. I can't blame them. But uh, there's more shit going on right now, uh, right by the Jordan MTR station. Yeah, I think there's a lot of animosity between just people every day about what's going on here. All right, so we're over here in Nathan Road, right by the Jordan MTR station. Uh, a good amount of the protesters are just bringing a lot of like trash bins, a lot of bricks, uh, a lot of guardrails, a lot of materials, uh, blocking the main road of Nathan Road, where most people, where it's like the main one of the main roads, a lot of traffic going through, uh, just obstructing a lot of the places. Still. I don't know how I feel about this. I feel like a lot of people need to go to school and need to go to work, uh, continue their daily lives. But I do understand what they're trying to accomplish. I don't know. I'm just, I think I'm kind of torn on it. I really don't know if it's gonna, like an effective means. So yesterday there was actually a lot of clashes between protesters and riot police over in uh, Polytechnic University. Uh, we're literally one or two blocks away. Uh, I think there's going to be another engagement gone. Holy shit! No traffic. And we're just standing here in the middle of the road. Bricks everywhere. A lot of trash. Bamboo, bamboo debris everywhere. Uh, maybe slightly chaotic. I think police are coming. Yeah, I think, yeah, the police are starting to make their push. I see uh, plenty of police vans coming through. I think they're starting to make their push. Uh, maybe towards either that point or maybe another egress point. Uh, we'll see where it goes. We'll see where it leads us. I just received a face mask from a very kind lady for free. Uh, just making sure that it, I'm well protected from the tear gas. Very kind lady. <laughs> gotta go. The police are fucking coming. We gotta go. We gotta go. Police are coming. It's pretty fucking bad. Holy shit. They come through, through another egress. It's not good. Shit. Oh, tear, tear gas, tear gas, tear gas. We're coming. It's not good. It's I think we're probably around 300 meters away from the tear gas that was dispersed. I feel the slight burn in my eyes, but nothing too, nothing too serious. The majority of the people have already left, but they're still pressed and in yellow vests are still outside and like documenting everything. All right, correction from what I said, it was actually EMS emergency personnel that are still in like yellow vests, like neon green yellow vests, making sure everybody's okay. But I think most of the people have dispersed. Yo, shit is crazy out here, man. Fuck. It's really crazy. Uh, so there was an older grandma that gave me a, a hat to wear. She said I had to wear a hat. What was the reason? You might go work you all jerk my lot. Okay. I guess I shouldn't be identified. I'm not easily identifiable. Something about old ladies and just being super nice and very hospitable. Heading back to the main road right now, we, turned, we took back our hats, our masks, try to look more discreetly. And there were some riot police that just came just now. It's terrible. And there was an... It's crazy. I think there was an old lady just now that just came, just, just came by saying, hey, be careful of the police. You know, they're gonna... You know, these guys are kidnapping, you know, abducting student protesters and murdering them. You know, part of the communist regime. I don't know if that lady was maybe exaggerating a bit much, but that's something that 
the CC Cup, CCP government would do. So we suddenly made our departure away from Jordan, all the action that was happening in, over in Jordan. A couple of things I really observed. Uh, old ladies are really nice. Uh, the old ladies were really nice just passing out masks, hats, making sure everybody was, was okay. I thought it felt like a lot of the protesters had like a very communal, tribal vibe, making sure everybody was, you know, all right, they were informing each other, uh, people were calling out, like, oh, does anybody have any water? People, you know, somebody was thirsty, somebody would run over and just, you know, make sure they were well hydrated in this blistering Hong Kong morning. So, very, very active coordination between the protesters. So good for them. Teamwork. Teamwork is always good. Teamwork is number one. Good for them. Shit's pretty crazy. Once the riot police came through, everybody dispersed. You know, everybody thoroughly di dispersed. You know, a lot of, I mean, it's not just young protesters. It was definitely a lot of the older ladies. I mean, some of the grandmas that were just making sure everybody was okay, that they were supporting the protests that are very anti-CCP, anti-Chinese Communism Party. All right, so we actually just made our walk back to Jordan, back to where we're staying at the moment, uh, back in Jimsa Joy, and it looks like there's still a, a high level amount of contention going on between the protesters. Uh, there's a lot of umbrellas going on. There's a lot of umbrellas blocking down the streets. Uh, press is everywhere. I see cameras everywhere, a lot of EMS. A lot of EMS, a lot of emergency medical personnel. So right now there's two latest developments right now. Number one, earlier in the celebration, they actually, the appeal courts actually struck down, they actually struck down the anti-mask law. So a lot of people were celebrating. Uh, there's more protests right now, but I think right now a lot of people are heading over to the Pauli U side. There's a lot of trap students over in Pauli U, so they're making that march from here all the way over to there. Uh, yeah, so anti-mask law has been struck down by the Court of Appeals, and then now the protest is heading over to Pauli U, over on the east side from where we're at right now, and see if they can save some of the captured students over there. So. We're gonna be walking over. On the way to Paul U, they just fired tear gas over there. Oh, now we're backing back. So we smell the tear gas right now, it's not doing too well. On the way to Paul U, there's actually a pretty good coordinated effort. I think they've dispersed some tear gas over the, over at the moment. Uh, they're tossing stuff back. Hopefully, uh, shouldn't be too bad. It's more of a well coordinated effort. We'll see where this standoff leads us. No matter what, they're still gonna try to push as forward as they can and all the way to Paul U. They're not letting a few tear gas stop them, but everybody's telling everybody, hey, slowly walk, slowly walk. So, very well coordinated effort coming in, coming in through this march. A lot of cooperation amongst the crowds. They're doing a, they're doing a slow retreat right now. They're, do, <coughs> they're doing a slow retreat right now. <sighs> it's still a standoff at the moment. At our position, we're roughly around 550 meters onto Poly U. I don't know how this is going to play out uh, specifically. Whatever. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, it got pretty bad. It got really contentious. Uh, they fired a couple of tear gas canisters, a couple rounds, uh, literally like five feet away, actually like close to three feet. A lot of students were pouring water to neutralize it. I got some in my eyes and some in my uh, some in my uh, oh, throat. Just coughed my ass out. Whew. I gotta say a lot of respect to these guys 
sticking to their fucking guns after just being knocked out, after tear gas has been chucked at them. They drink water, they wash their faces, they wash the gas off their faces, and then they go back and they continue fucking marching to rescue their friends over at Paul U. It's crazy, it's incredibly respectful. It's currently like a complete standoff over here. We're eventually advancing more and more. Uh, there's a couple tear gas rounds that actually flew by. It's being ex extinguished. Uh, they're being, ex being quite extinguished right now. A lot of rounds are being extended. There's absolute incredible coordination that are going th through. I think tear gas is having a lot of ineff ineffectiveness on the crowd dispersion, on crowd control. It's being quickly extinguished. So I think right now the current situation is that you got the front line of protesters over there, uh, roughly around 50 to 60 meters within between the first wave of protesters towards the riot police, it's at a stand standoff right now. Media is over to the side, mostly press, and yeah, just two sides witnessing. Uh, it's pretty much a flurry of between tear gas, tear gas and brakes flooring back and forth. Alright, they've just arrested someone. They've actually just arrested a few people, roughly around 30 to 40 meters within contention. Oh, that fucking sucks. That's terrible. Just like any other conflict, there's always constant back and forth skirmishes between one side and another, and one's gonna gain ground, one's gonna lose ground, vice versa. It is what it is. It is what it is. I, I think if anything, the protesters side are, you know, a little bit more jitterish, a little bit more scarish, just because they have more stake at loss, which kind of explains more preactive dashes away from police. Sometimes I have, I wish I was, I had press credentials just so I could just chill. I have to say the protesters far and vastly outnumber the police at hand. At least 150 to 1. I think it's gotten... I think it's gotten worse where they've actually shot 15 consecutive tear gas rounds, so they're unable to quickly put them around. One, two, three tear gas rounds. You know, group effort, you can easily put them out. But if they're firing at least 10 consecutive rounds, I think it's gonna easily overwhelm unless if they've diverted a smarter system to actually put these out perfectly. So I think they eventually just overwhelmed a lot of the uh, frontline protesters. I don't know if we're gonna even come back. Possibly within the past 10 minutes, I think the police have gained at least 100 meters from firing multiple consecutive, I think, in a burst of 15 to 20 tear gas rounds. Uh, yeah, that fucking sucks. I think we're being passed further and further back. I think people are just being a lot more cautious, if anything. So after two weeks of being here in Hong Kong, witnessing student protests over in Jordan and James La Jerry District, hanging out, witnessing my cousin getting married, eating a ton of delicious, amazing food, and learning more and more about my father's history as well as the history of Hong Kong, I gotta say, I was definitely not disappointed and I truly, truly love Hong Kong for what it really, truly stands for. 
It's an amazing place. Come here to eat and come here for the pe people. I love Hong Kong. <laughs>